<clears throat> so it is 7.34 p.m. on uh, Monday, December 19th, 2022. Good evening, everyone. <clears throat> My name is Christian Klein, and I am the chair of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals. I'm calling this meeting of the board to order. I would ask all attendees who are not recognized to speak to please mute their connection until such time as they are recognized by the chair. First, I'd like to confirm that all members and anticipated officials are present. Um, members of the Zoning Board of Appeals, Roger DuPont. Here. Patrick Hanlon. Here. Uh, Daniel Riccadelli. Here. <clears throat> Excuse me, Ben Holly. Here. And Elaine Hoffman. Here. Welcome to all of you. On behalf of the town, uh, Rick Valorelli, the board's administrator. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Rick. And Vincent Lee, our assisting staff from Inspection Services. Here. It's great to have you as well. Um, so this evening, um, we don't have our outside counsel. And at this point, I don't see a rep from the applicants. So I will move us along. This open meeting of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals is being conducted remotely consistent with an act relative to extending certain state of emergency accommodations signed into law on July 16th, 2022. This act includes an extension until March 31st, 2023 of the remote meeting provisions of Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law which suspended the requirement to hold all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Public bodies may continue holding meetings remotely without a quorum of the public body physically present at a meeting location, so long as they provide adequate alternative access to remote meetings. Public bodies may meet remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. An opportunity for public participation will be provided during the public comment period during each public hearing. For this meeting, the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals has convened a video conference via the Zoom application with online and telephone access as listed on the agenda posted to the town's website, identifying how the public may join. This meeting is being recorded and it will be broadcast by ACMI. Please be aware that attendees are participating by a variety of means. Some attendees are participating by video conference, others are participating by computer audio or by telephone. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you, your screen name, or another identifier. Please take care to not share personal information. Anything you broadcast may be captured by the recording. We ask you to please maintain decorum during the meeting, including displaying an appropriate background. All supporting materials that have been provided members of this body are available on the town's website, unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda. And as chair, I reserve the right to take items out of order in the interest of promoting an orderly meeting. Uh, so Turning now to the comprehensive permit hearing uh, for the residences at Mill Brook to be located at 1021 1025 Massachusetts Avenue. So at the previous hearing on November 22nd, the board voted to continue the hearing to this evening. This was done to allow the town additional time to hire peer review consultants to assist in the review of the application. Unfortunately, this process has continued to take significantly longer than was anticipated by both the town and the board. And as a result, the board is not in a position to sub substantively discuss the proposal and resume the hearing this evening. The town and board have retained the following peer review consultants to assist in the review of this project, and they will provide initial reports to the board at the end of the first week in January. For architectural and urban design, the peer review consultant is David Davis Square Associates. And for transportation, stormwater, and conservation, the peer review consultant is Tetra Tech. We have been in contact with both of those firms. Um, they have been introduced to uh, the town and to the applicant, and we are all in agreement that we will have documentation from them at the end of the first week in January. After consult consultation with the peer reviewers and the applicant, we have agreed to the following hearing schedule, which I'll put up on the screen. <clears throat> So these are all the meetings that the board has coming up. The meetings in blue are specifically the comprehensive permit hearings. So we do have a site walkthrough scheduled this Wednesday, December 21st at 11 a.m. That's been on the town calendar since the end of last week. Uh, we have the first substantive hearing will be on Thursday, January 12th at 7.30 p.m. over Zoom. Uh, we will then follow every two weeks on the Thursday so the next would be Thursday, January 26th. 
then Thursday, February 9th, Thursday, February 23rd. And should we need additional dates, we would have Thursday, March 9th and Thursday, March 23rd. And the intent is to try very hard and diligently to wrap up the public hearing portion of the hearing uh, before Friday the 31st, which is the last day under current law that we're allowed to hold a remote public meeting. Um, and then <clears throat> under statute, the board has 180 days from the date that the hearing was opened to, con to conclude the hearing. The opening date was October 18th. So the, the final date that the board may meet on this without an extension would be April 16th of 2023. So- Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Um, <clears throat> in the last couple of uh, 40Bs, at the close of the hearing, there was a period for deliberation. Mm -hmm. I've forgotten exactly how long it lasted. I think maybe it was 60 days. And I, days. I, take, yeah. I take it that that once the hearing closes here, we will probably, we will not be going immediately to making a decision, but we'll be involved in a uh, a process where the record is closed, there can be no more testimony, and uh, we will all have to confer together to decide what to do. Is, is that the procedure? That is correct. So at the close of the public hearing, um, <clears throat> the board will formally vote to close the public hearing. And at that stage, um, what convenes is essentially it's a meeting of the board to discuss the terms of the decision and render a final decision. The board has 40 days from the day that it uh, concludes the open uh, public comment period of the hearing. Um, and those meetings, the board is no longer allowed to take testimony from any party. So uh, neither the applicant nor the town nor the public is allowed to provide additional testimony. The board has to rely on the testimony that it has received through the public hearings. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Dupont. So um, down at the end where you say March 31st, last day to hold remote, <clears throat> excuse me, public mm -hmm. hearings, does that 40 day period, uh, does that meet the definition of public? Or is that something where we could still meet by Zoom? So, so it is a public, it is a formal public meeting uh, while we are deliberating the decision. And so um, we would have to determine exactly what format we would do that meeting in. Um, there are many parties who think that the, the state will act and change the rules in regards to uh, holding public meetings and public hearings before the 31st and enable the uh, boards to possibly continue meeting. Um, the state does have a history of doing that at the very, very last second. So, um, at, if, you know, that may, we may not know until really very close to that end. But we have had discussions with um, the town committee that's looking into hybrid meeting formats. And um, so that may be an opportunity to utilize something along those lines. So <clears throat> there are just two things that the board needs to vote on this evening. Um, the second is the, the vote to continue uh, the public hearing until Thursday, January 12th. Um, but first, um, the board's peer review consultants are paid uh, from, the, uh, from funds provided by the applicant um, under state law chapter 44, section 53G. And the board had at its October 18th hearing had asked for an initial deposit of ten thousand uh, dollars be placed into an account with the town in order to enable the board to hire the consultants um, that money was placed in the account uh, the following week and the applicants have now been hired uh, the so the board now has the formal cost uh, from those two consultants in order to conduct their work um, and the the total a contract is for $34, uh, there's $34,000 $34, between the two applicants. Um, and so the board needs to request an additional um, $24,000. Uh, 
uh, in order to have all the money on hand to pay the consultants um, upon delivery of, of the services that they're contracted to provide. So with that, <clears throat> um, just taking one quick look here, see if we have, no. Um, <clears throat> So with that, I would move that the Zoning Board of Appeals request the applicant transfer an additional amount of $24,000 to the designated town account to fund the approved peer review consultants in the areas of civil engineering, site design, building design, urban context, environmental impacts, and traffic and transportation impacts for the project scope as provided in the request for proposal. Further, I move the town council and the Department of Planning and Community Development staff be authorized to manage the contracts for the approved peer review consultants and communicate needs for additional funds for the retention of such consultants consistent with chapter 44, section 53G. And the board reserves the right to request additional funds in the future. May I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Are there any questions among the board to the nature of the vote? Okay, so on the motion to request the additional 53G funding, uh, roll call vote of the board. Mr. DuPont? Aye. Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Mr. Riccardelli? Aye. Ms. Hoffman? Aye. Mr. Holly? Aye. And the chair votes aye. That motion is passed. Um, then with that, um, I have a motion. I move that tonight's hearing be continued until Thursday, January 12th, 2022 at 7.30 p.m. This is a this is to uh, continue the formal public hearing. Um, and but as we had mentioned before, there is a public site walk. There's a public meeting tomorrow, uh, excuse me, on Wednesday, which is just a site walkthrough uh, that will be conducted at uh, 1021, 1025 Mass Ave um, at 11 a.m. So the motion is to uh, I move that tonight's hearing be continued to Thursday, January 12th, 2022 at 7.30 p.m. Do I have a second? Second. Mr. Um, are there any questions from the board as to the vote? With that roll call vote of the board, uh, Minister DuPont. Aye. Mr. Hanlon. Aye. Mr. Riccadelli. Aye. Ms. Hoffman. Aye. Mr. Holly. Aye. And the chair votes aye. We are continued on the comprehensive permit application for 1021-1025 Massachusetts Avenue until Thursday, January 12th, 2023 at 7.30 p.m. Uh, thank you all for your assistance in that. Um, I do apologize to the public that the opening process, part of this process has um, been extended and delayed but uh, we did run into significant problems in uh, being able to retain consultants, uh, which we now do have on hand. And so we have every confidence that uh, when we return in the new year, we will be able to pick up immediately and, um, and move forward with the hearings. Uh, so the hearing dates are here on the screen and I will be um, <clears throat> requesting that they be posted to the website um, along with uh, correspondence that has been received in the last uh, couple of weeks and make sure that all of that um, is made available uh, publicly on the website for uh, both for the website and then also for the agenda for the for the next hearing. So with that, that is um, the only other item we had on our agenda this evening was a to approve the minutes from December 6th. Um, we're just making a couple of final corrections on those and uh, those will be reissued to the board. So we're gonna actually postpone that to tomorrow night because we are meeting again tomorrow night um, on, on two hearings. So I will postpone that item, which would then bring us to the conclusion of tonight's meeting. So, so with this, yes, <laughs> I would thank everyone for their participation in tonight's meeting of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals. I appreciate everyone's patience throughout this meeting. And again, I apologize that we are continuing again on the comprehensive permit hearing. I especially want to thank uh, Rick Valorelli, Vincent Lee, and uh, members of the staff in the legal department and the Department of Planning and Community Development for their assistance, uh, both in preparing for this meeting and for uh, assisting us in acquiring our consultants for this e for this hearing. Please note the purpose of the board's recording of the meeting is to ensure the creation of an accurate record of its proceedings, and it's our understanding the recordings made by ACMI will be available on demand at acmi.tv within the coming days. And if anyone has comments or recommendations, please send them via email 
to zba at town.arlington.ma.us. That email address is also listed on the Zoning Board of Appeals website. And to conclude tonight's meeting, I would ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. May I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. DuPont. This is a vote of the board to adjourn. Uh, Mr. DuPont. Aye. Mr. Hanlon. Aye. Mr. Cadelli. Aye. Ms. Hoffman. Aye. Mr. Holly. Aye. And the chair votes aye. The board is adjourned. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Good night, guys. Thank you. Good night. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Good night. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye.